Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dye and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, yeah, welcome to a new episode. Um, it feels as if I've just sat down like yesterday whenever I talked to you the last time. But yeah, time flies and there's so many things currently happening um, that, yeah, we are already uh, nearing the next collection launch. And so I wanted to show what will be available in the April collection, which will be our first kind of summer, spring and summer themed yarn collection that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks. And for those of you who are new here, I do these kind of preview videos to show you the naturally dyed yarns that we've been working on for the past couple of weeks in natural lighting and movement because I feel that this is the best way to show the colorways. Um, and I've just recently uh, had some requests of people who were asking if I could also post pictures of the yarn prior to um, a shop update event and I don't do this because there are several reasons. One is that I feel like a picture can never depict the full spectrum of a color and I would not want someone to just look at the pictures and then, you know, not watch the video and in the end purchase something that they might have a different um, first impression of. And what I can definitely recommend is, um, or I can pass on this tip from a couple of my wonderful customers. Wow, okay, the light's going wild. Um, I can pass on a little trick from some lovely customers who uh, are just screenshotting the video whenever they see something that they actually like. They just take a screenshot to compare it potentially to other colors they might like and yeah, just organize their decisions uh, based on that, which I find very clever. And I think this is kind of a hybrid um, of, you know, the wish for pictures and uh, the video format. So maybe this way it can be easier so you don't have to rewatch the video. Just take a couple of screenshots and then you can maybe compare them because you've still seen them in movement and natural light. So I, I think just having a little reminder as a screenshot might be quite helpful. But yeah, what I've been up to these past couple of weeks, um, it was quite busy and I also want to talk about a couple of things, you know, related to the, a couple of future admin things um, in the admin section later on. But basically it was just a lot of work in a short time frame and that is partially because I am going to be away um, at the end of the month for the Willy Good Gathering in Edinburgh, which is a new yarn festival, if you haven't heard of it yet, um, that I'm super excited about because I've been wanting to um, visit Edinburgh for the, pretty much the longest time. And yeah, now that there's a yarn fest, I have no excuse to not go. So I decided to um, book tickets and come over to Edinburgh. So. Uh, if you're there, let me know, leave me a little comment and maybe we can meet. Um, and I'm super excited about this trip. Um, it's a bit of a treat after some really busy months. Um, and I'm, I'm just really happy. But that also means that I had to move uh, the shop update from our usual last Friday of the month to a week before that. And that is because I cannot really moderate questions and you know, when the shop update goes live, um, most of my work is done, but I still want to make sure everything runs smoothly and that you have, um, you know, a very smooth uh, experience. And if something goes wrong um, with an order or something, um, then I can help right away. Um, so I don't really like to be, um, yeah, to be away on a trip and have a shop update. That is not really something I feel comfortable with and therefore we will move this month's shop update to the 19th of April um, that is a little bit earlier than we usually do it like we usually update every last Friday of the month but this month it's all a bit different um, but honestly I actually like this date because I don't know if you know but I have a background in the music industry before I started uh, to become a yarn dyer pretty much and 
I have a thing for music and musical phenomenons and all that and what better could you do in this situation than launch on the same date as a Taylor Swift album comes out so <laughs> I'm pretty excited uh, to share this launch date <laughs> in this way and it actually even also inspired some things in this um, collection but more on that later um, for now I wanted to say that there's going to be a lot of special stuff in this update, also including a sale, uh, which I will tell you a bit more in the admin section at the end. Um, also a new, not really a new, but a seasonal base that we are bringing back that used to be, you know, that's just a summer base kind of. And yeah, lots of specials in this one, I guess. Um, so without further ado, let me give you a little overview of what we're restocking in this uh, collection launch. So first of all, a little overview of what we're going to have in this April collection. Um, I'm incredibly happy about bringing back our spring and summer blend linen, which we launched last year. And it is a blend of flax fibers and wool, and therefore it's more of our spring and summer blend. and. We will restock that one in a four ply weight and a DK weight, though a few things have changed um, in comparison to last year's spin. And I will go into this once I talk you through all the facts about this base. But yeah, linen is coming back. We are ready for spring and summer knits. Um, then we are also going to have a big restock of our sock yarn base Ovis, which is a natural sock yarn uh, containing no nylon and no um, like ad artificial additives. It's a pure wool sock yarn. And uh, we are not only going to bring back full skeins in some moody, some spring-like colors, but we are also gonna have mini skein sets for the first time on Ovis, if I remember correctly, because I don't think we've ever done them, them before. It's always a bit of a labor of love, if I may say so, because making those is just, you know, most dyers, not most, but some dyers, um, they are able to get their bases um, in mini skein form already um, for like advents and such. Um, but we actually get this yarn custom spun and we have no option to get it um, like wound into mini skeins um, by someone else. So we have to do it ourselves um, with the help of a little motorized Swift that actually has also a meter rich counter. So it's kind of automatical and it is a big help for this task but still we can only do three at a time and so yeah it's a labor of love uh, and it takes a lot of time and then the dyeing process and coming up with so many different colors is also something that usually takes a couple of months um, for this big of a mini skein collection for me and so I don't really do them often, but they were so much fun to make this time and I love the inspiration behind it. And so I can't wait to show them to you a bit later. <clears throat> and then this is what we are going to kind of restock. So this collection is going to be significantly smaller than our previous ones in uh, the last months. And that is also because um, we are going to change up a couple of things. I'm going to go in depth about this in the admin section, but um, in order for us to manage everything, it just needs to be slowed down a little bit, work here. Just needs to slow down a little because currently it's just constant, constant, constant work and pretty much no off time and no time for creative things apart from the production. And that is one thing I always wanted to avoid. Um, and therefore we're kind of changing a few things up over the summer and there will be some new things um, and new, you know, things will be done a little differently. I don't think it's even going to be that noticeable on the customer side, um, but we are just changing th some things up in order for it to be more manageable for us. Um, and by us, I mean me and my mom who helps me. <laughs> So it's like, I always like to say us and we because I, this whole thing couldn't really be done without the help of so many lovely uh, people in my surrounding, my family, my friends. 
and therefore I never like to say I because it's just, just not only me I have so much like help and support from all of them and so I don't really like to say it's just me and just my work um, but yeah it's mainly my work and then I have my mum who often comes to the studio to help luckily and yeah the support of my family and friends which is lovely anyhow I've rambled a lot now so we're gonna have linen in two weights we're gonna have a big re restock of overs in regular full skeins and then the mini skein sets in this collection and without further ado let me start showing you what we'll have color wise so first of all let me give you a little overview of our summer and spring blend linen which is coming back uh, in this collection and it also only comes back for this collection so we got a really small batch this time and um, it's the only time we'll have this available apart from a few colors that will be exclusively available at the wedding wool week and event at the end of may where we'll bring just a very small selection of shades um, as well um, but so we're not going to have a whole shop update with this blend apart from this one. And I just wanted to give you a little recap. There is a whole video about linen um, where I introduce it all in depth and show you some things and samples and, you know, tell a bit of the backstory of it. But, but what it basically is, is a blend of 75% uh, blue face Leicester in like an old meal kind of color and mixed with 25% of uh, natural unbleached flax fibers uh, resulting in a beautiful drapey um, summery transitional yarn that's not like a it doesn't feel like plant fibery particularly um, but it is you know it has a bit of this cooling effect of the plant fibers in it um, <clears throat> it was custom spun for wool and twine last year for the first time and this year we got a new spin with a couple of tweaks and a couple of changes to it um, compared to last year one of them being the color to be honest and I'm gonna show it to you now because we have like this is a sample that we were knitting out of last year's blend. This is the Gimme the Tea um, t-shirt pattern by Jenny Ansa, my dear friend of Koti Kotoni Knits. And um, this is just a very simple raglan construction t-shirt that has a beautiful drape um, and it's just very, very lovely. And this was last year's blend in the DK weight version. And this year, um, it's I don't know how noticeable it is in on camera, but this year's blend is a tiny bit darker than last year's. I don't know if it's even visible. It's not a lot, but it's slightly slightly darker. Um, I'm sorry, the light is so wild today because we're having a like an like clouds, but also a lot of sun. So it's excuse me if I have to adjust the lighting a little bit. But yeah, the new blend is slightly darker. It's not really that much, but I still wanted to be transparent about it because this is what I always talk about when I uh, speak about getting yarn spun that contain a natural color from like a, f a sheep's fleece natural color. Um, they can vary from shearing to shearing. And so we got a new shearing this year and it's just a bit darker um, than last year's blend. So um, the, the fiber content is still the same as this one. So it's not a lot has changed, but we've changed the makeup of it all. Sorry, I just dropped the skin. I have to try and get it up here again. Um, but we have the DK and the four ply weight as we had last year. And the four ply weight has changed slightly in meter rich. So now, it is a 350 meters per 100 grams. Last year it was a, a 400 meters per, per 100 grams, but uh, I decided that it might be helpful to have a slightly heavier fingering weight yarn because that seemed to be more suitable for more uh, patterns that are out there for summer knits and tees and tops. So this one is a 350 meters per 100 grams now. The DK weight stayed 230 meters per 100 grams. So that is still the same, but what also changed for both is that we have it in a, available in 100 gram skeins 
Um, they used to be in uh, 50 gram skeins last year, which was initially a good thought, I believe. Um, but with the logistics and handling, it was just it was just a lot. And I think we could have done everything a lot more um, efficiently if it would have been in 100 gram skeins, also price wise, because. Uh, 50 gram skeins technically are more expensive during the spinning process and they are also more labor intensive on our side because of the twisting and the labeling and all that. And so it's 100 grams now instead of the 50 and we will be able to offer it at a slightly cheaper price compared to last year. So you will find all info on my base page um, that I'll link here and also below the video um, where you will find all the info about meter rich and fiber blend, um, recommended needle sizes, everything. Um, and I will also link a couple of pattern suggestions that I have curated for you um, if you need a little inspiration. I actually went wild on this because there were so many nice um, spring and summer patterns uh, popping up on my Ravelry that I got really inspired and I think there are like almost 50 pattern suggestions in the little link that I put below. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of ideas. Um, but I, I honestly, I really... I really enjoyed thinking about summer and spring knits so and I'm really looking forward I'm actually ca about to cast on a really wintry project but I also am aiming for a little simple tea project for my travels to Edinburgh so I'm probably gonna uh, apply for a test knit um, of a very simple tea um, I'm gonna show you once it all is a bit you know grown in my head and I've decided on a color and all that but yeah, this is all about linen. As said, it's only going to be, be available in this uh, collection. We're not going to have a second one. Um, and I guess without further ado, let me start showing you what colorways we've dyed on this base. So uh, with the new linen blend, uh, dyeing on this is really special because um, I don't know how familiar you are with the techniques of natural dyeing, but with how it works is that um, there are different mordants for protein fibers such as wool and silk and then for cellulose fibers so, such as flax and cotton and such. Um, and generally um, if you mordant in one way um, the other fiber might not take up the exact same amount of mordant and therefore the color will not be picked up by that fiber content in the same way. And that is what I absolutely adore about dyeing on uh, on linen because it is um, it results in a beautiful heathered effect because the flax content of the yarn doesn't take um, the dye as much as the protein content of the or the wool content, and that results in a beautiful heathering that I find so lively and stunning. I, I just absolutely love to dye on it, and it was very enjoyable to create this collection. All in all, I think this whole collection, because I'm, sometimes I'm strange <laughs> in how my brain works and I actually really enjoyed imagining some moody shades for the summer. I know this might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I honestly, I was so, I was kind of put off by a lot of very bright colors that I've recently been seeing in, in uh, summer knits and yeah, you know, it's, for me this is just not it and i was thinking that maybe there are a couple more people out there who feel this way um that the bright colors are just not your thing and and so i think with this collection i kind of aimed for a more muted moody summer collection so let's call it the moody summer collection and even more fitting that it actually launches with the new taylor swift album that is called the tortured poets so it's kind of a moody theme <laughs> going on so I guess we're really in sync in this way um, but without further ado let me start showing you what we've dyed so this one is actually I don't know if you can see it. here you can see the heathering effect very well it's more uh, present in the darker shades because um, it happens it just happens more um, it happens to be more 
of a contrast between the light flax fibers and the dark like dyed wool fibers and this one is the first colorway and it's called mocha it's like a dark it looks a bit more reddish on camera but this is maybe depicting it more it's like a dark chocolate brown um that i absolutely love and i think it's so pretty um and it really shows this heathering effect by the way i'm showing these colorways on the four ply base um and it's also going to be they are all going to be available on four ply and dk weight so this is the four ply weight version so this is mocha and we have another pretty dark shade that i absolutely love by the way if i sound a little sniffly i'm uh, struggling with a hay fever a little bit it's uh, really present these days <laughs> Um, but we have a new colorway that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, not a new, it's an old favorite, but another darker colorway. And this one is mulberry, and it's like a dark berry, purpley red. Or reddish purple, if you will. I don't know, I have a feeling that it's a bit difficult to show all these shades on camera. But yeah, it's like a deep burgundy neutral and compared to mocha mocha is a bit more warm and the uh mulberry is a bit more um purpley red um if you will and i think it also shows the heather ring so beautifully i think it just looks as if uh, it was dyed in the wool and not as a finished skein which is something i absolutely love but yeah, the two moody ones, the really moody ones, all the other ones are kind of moody as well. But sticking to the kind of neutral uh, range, this one is an old favorite as well. And this one is caramel. And it looks a bit more reddish in undertone on camera, but I would say it's more golden in real life. But yeah, this is caramel, a bit more of a warmer shade in case you're into that, because we also have a lot of cool shades this time, which have been very requested recently. I think you've been all very about the cool shades. And since I had a lot of collections with dominantly uh, warm shades recently, I think it's also nice to have a bit of a change. Um, next up, which one am I going to show you next? So, ah, yeah, maybe the pinks, because the pinks are actually uh, also known colorways that we used to have on other bases before. This one, oh, the light is going down a little. Maybe this is better. So this one is Rose Garden, and it's a beautiful muted rosy tone. And then we have its companion Foxglove which is a slightly more saturated reddish pink. So here are them side by side. Um, so yeah, Rose Garden is a bit more like a mute, um, not muted, but less saturated version of Foxglove. And light is going up again. Um, but let me also show it to you next to Mulberry, because I think this is kind of the same color family so yeah so far that is it next up we have a new colorway which is um more in the purple family um and this one is called dove and it's like a grayish grayish light purple but very coolish in undertone so this one is Dove. Let me show it to you next to Rose Garden because these are such a beautiful match, I feel. So that one is Dove. Then we have, as many of you requested, we have a green, which is called Matcha. And this is just a very uh, kind of muted grayish green. Um, it might be a bit more saturated in real life, but yeah, I think this shows the color okay-ish. So this one is matcha. 
and then we have two last ones this one this one is like a grayish purple but more of a gray and it is called marble because it reminds me of the marbling effect and one last one that is called flax and this one is a warm beigey uh, colorway trying to make this more visible um, but let me show you the kind of neutral tones next to the undyed if I can oh yeah here it is um, so in the middle we have the undyed and then here we have the flax and here we have the marble just like a grayish purple but I should also compare it to Duff potentially because here you could wow now it's going really wild <sighs> um, so here the, this is the marble and the other one is Duff so it's a slight, like, there, there's a bit of a difference in saturation that's hard to pick up on camera, but I hope you can still see that is that marble is a bit more grayish and dove is a bit more purple in undertone. So yeah, I guess we are done with all the colorways. Then, of course, we'll have the undyed available. Um, on both weights as well or oh, I should also again show it with flax because there you can see how much warmer flax actually is because with those neutrals I always find it quite helpful to show them side by side but yeah this is the beautiful new collection of linen and uh, if there is something you enjoy about uh, this base um, or this the colors then I would recommend uh, being on time for the shop update because I know things have been quite relaxed in the past couple of months because we've been upping stock so much um, but this is going to be very limited in amount because I only had a small amount spun I'm still learning to work with the seasons let's face it like I'm still not a professional with calculating right amounts of yarn for seasons and such and especially with a yarn that is like so uh, connected to summer I think it's always very hard to calculate how much I would like to get spun and you know it's 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 a bit tricky for me still <laughs> I mean we've only had this for the first time last year and yeah uh, I'm still adapting to how things are and how demands are uh, over the seasons and all that so but yeah that is all about linen so let me jump to the next section or base if you will so next up I'm gonna talk you through what we'll have available on our Overstock base. As a little reminder, Overstock is our natural, plastic-free and non-superwash um, sock yarn that is a blend of 50% Cheviot and 50% Jacobs fibers, spun to a slightly higher twist in order for it to be durable enough for socks. It has a 375 per, um, meters per 100 grams, um, which is a fingering weight, but slightly thicker than your typical 400 meters per 100 grams in order to achieve a more tight gauge, which can also help for durability in socks. And um, for this collection, like there are a lot of shades on Overs because we didn't restock last month and I wanted to have a lot of shades for you for your potential spring and summer knits when days are getting a little warmer. I thought it's nice for you to have a big selection to choose from and potentially knit a few socks because, I don't know, for me, um, just spring and summer are the months uh, for sock knitting and for smaller projects as well because I'm going to show them to you in a podcast episode very soon, but we've been working on a couple of samples of where we were using overs with a strand of silk mohair, for example, to also showcase how it behaves in projects that are not socks, but they are still uh, smaller projects that you would easily be able to knit uh, during spring and summer, I feel. Um, so those are coming soon. Um, other than that, I'm currently working on a pattern suggestions page for Overs and I don't know if it's ready by the time this video goes up. I don't think so, but I will uh, 
link it to my base page as soon as it's ready. Um, but for now, um, I'm just going to show you what we'll have available. And this collection is, um, other than the slightly moodier shades on linen, I tried to make a good mix of neutrals, more punchy colors and a few pastels in order to have some accents um, in your knitting, if you like. And we also worked on a little special uh, all around mini skein sets because I know you all are so in love with them whenever we do them. So I wanted to bring them back with a lot of fresh colors uh, that would really suit the spring and summertime. Um, so yeah, I guess I will start out with those because I know that you've been really curious about them when I showed them on Instagram uh, first. So these sets are all six uh, 20 gram mini skeins, so 120 grams um, of yarn and each mini has 80 meters. Um, and we actually designed them in a way that they would suit full skeins from the collection. So you can actually mix and match between a lot of them. Uh, I tried to show a few combos. I'm not sure if I, how I will manage within the video, but I'll try to show that we have a couple of um, matching shades with the sets. Uh, so in order you want uh, that you want to make something with the mini set and then add a full skein, that should be possible. And also the um, minis, they would work kind of as fades partially. Um, because we group them instead of mixing them through the color families, we group them within color families this time, which was also something new. Um, and yeah, I gave them names inspired by <laughs> Taylor Swift's latest album, which is Midnight's, which was released in 2022, if I'm not mistaken. And I've just loved this album and I kind of feel like before the new one drops, um, I thought it's nice to have a little bit of inspiration from that album. It was just so fitting, it really inspired. I listened to it a lot over the past couple of months uh, while dying. And so I thought it would be only fitting to have the names uh, from some songs of the album as inspiration of the mini skein sets. And since we wanted to make them in like color groups this time for the first time, I think uh, it just works very well this time with the naming. <laughs> So without further ado, let me start showing them to you. So the first mini skein set, let me see how I can hold these up without making a huge mess. Um, well, light, hello. Um, so this is the first one. It's really hard to hold them up, but maybe this way. This one is lavender haze and yeah, pretty self-explanatory is a fade of different purples and gr like grayish purples, all kinds of purples. So yeah, and this is just such a sweet selection, I feel. So hard to show them. Why is it so hard? <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Like, are the colorways picking up like this? So yeah, this is the lavender haze. Um, with some lighter purples, with le less saturation, up to like really saturated ones and warmer ones, grayish ones. A little selection of beautiful purples. So this is Lavender Haze. Next up, we have a beautiful selection of neutral... Wow! <sighs> I'm so sorry, but it's just not the best day to podcast, probably. <laughs> This one is called Sweet Nothing and it is a Sweet Nothing set. <laughs> so it's like a sweet set of neutrals that I think is something not very popular usually, like not seen very much in the hand dyeing scene. But I feel it's like so much my thing to have a selection of neutrals that I could work into something with... Sorry, my camera battery was exhausted from all the light adjustments, I guess. But I was just talking about Sweet Nothing, which is a, you know, fade of neutrals. And I know this might be a bit risky to do as a dyer, but, you know, I absolutely adore neutrals. And I think it's just, you know, considering them as part of a larger project, I think this could be such a nice base if you wanted something less colorful, but still with 
different colors in it like for example I don't know a quilted blanket not quilted these kind of Laura Penrose um, multicolored ones and if you wanted to have like a good base that you can mix in other colors then that would go with pretty much everything this type of neutral set I thought would be actually very good to work with like it might not be <clears throat> sparking like as as interesting color wise as the other ones but you know it's I think it's such a good base point um, if you want to work a multicolored project and maybe combine it with a more saturated shade from a full range or something like that so this one is sweet nothing then next up we have karma which is a blend of greens and you know olivey browny shades so this is the greenish range and it's called karma which is also one of my favorite songs from the album <laughs> So this is a lot of greens like and swampy olives and this one actually the the really light one almost looks as if it would glow in the dark which I find pretty cool. <laughs> so that one is Karma. And last but not least we have Bejeweled um, which is more of the pink reddish orangey range. And I love this one so much. I think it's so pretty. So this is Bejeweled. And yeah, I guess we are done with all of the shades, like on the mini skein sets. I love making these and even though they are like a lot of work and honestly my right arm is so sore from twisting them all yesterday. <laughs> Um, but it's just a lot of fun to make and I really enjoy them. So those are the mini skein sets. They will be available um, as well and they are only available in very limited quantities so I would recommend being on time because I cannot, you know, I cannot also not reproduce any of those because, you know, some of the recipes were just trials and tests and you know I, I didn't write down all of them. That's also one of the fun things about dyeing these is that I don't have to be so particular about things and I can just express my creativity a little more. <sighs> Sun's out again. Um, yeah, but I guess we're gonna continue with showing some of the new shades on Ovis. Um, and with this one we have a good mix of I feel neutrals and more punchy colors and also more pastels so I hope that there's something for everyone and I also hope to you know inspire to combine them with the mini skein sets because I feel like this could be so much fun um so this one is the first one and it's called bone it's like a warm silver if I may say so it's not a beige it's more of a gray but it is a warm gray a really beautiful one. I think it's so good to mix with other shades and if you want to go for like a marled effect with the minis for example this one is a really good base that goes with everything from cool to warm pretty much. So this one is bone. I will try to go for the neutrals first because I feel this is the easiest. This one is a new beige and it's called oat milk and this one is like a warmish beige that also goes with a lot of shades and would make a great base for like a color work sock or something if you want to use some of the minis. So those are Bone and Oat Milk, both very great base colors in this way. Next up we have some more beige and browns. This one is like a warm lighter brown beige called honeycomb because it has this caramelly honey undertone to me. I don't know if it's visible here. Yeah. This is honeycomb. Next up we have this one and it's called bourbon because it reminds me of bourbon. <laughs> Very obvious here. So it's a bit more saturated than honeycomb. 
and more reddish in undertone a little bit, but not too much. It's actually more red on camera than it is in real life, I would say. Um, and these are all the neutrals together, so it's bone, oat milk, honeycomb and bourbon. Then we have another kind of neutral but hybrid. So this one is linen and it's so much more pinkish, I think, in, on a white base dyed than on grey bases. We have this on our BFL Romney as well and it appears so much less pink, I feel. Um, but this was dyed on a white base and I think it's something between a beige and a pink and it's such a great color for example also with Now I will drop everything but in comparison like together with the bejewel set I Think this would be so pretty and it's but it also works as like a neutral with for example the karma set because it's not necessarily really pink it's more like a neutral kind of pink pinky beige <laughs> if that makes sense so but speaking of those let me try and hold it with two of the other neutrals so in this case I'm gonna hold it with bone and oat milk so you can see that it's slightly more pinkish but not necessarily really pink so yeah next up we will go with the true pinks and they are kind of new colorways um, that we designed for this collection. And this one is Camellia, a light warm pink, dyed on a gray base, so it has a bit of a heathered effect. And the other pink would be Hibiscus, and this is another very beautiful saturated pink. But with a warm undertone as well. So these are the two next to each other. And I think they would also go really great as bases. Sorry, I'm gonna drop some of the skeins because I cannot hold them all. But they would be so beautiful as main skeins for the Bejeweled set, I feel. Also, they are, you know, complementing each other because the, uh, the set does not include any of the two. Like, one is a bit similar, the more saturated pink, but most are quite different. So, yeah, those are the pinks. Then next up, we'll go... I will go with the one really dark shade that we have. Um, and this one, I'm really so sorry, it's just something I cannot change and I have to record today <laughs> because otherwise you will not be able to see the colors before. But this is grape and it's like a variegated almost between reddish and purpley shades. I don't know if it's visible that there's some variegation but it's a very complex color, like it's not just a solid. It's actually kind of a semi-solid shade with some variegation throughout. And I'm really in love with this one. I think it would also be very nice with the Bejeweled set. But I'm stopping this now because I could also hold it with this one, the Lavender Haze one. Also make a really good match. But we have so many other matches for the Lavender Haze set, like I'm only gonna show you a glimpse of it, but these are all the purples we've dyed because I know that people are currently like really into purples and lavenders and so we decided to make a few of them. <laughs> so let me start out with the most neutral one. This one is Nimbus and it's like almost, it's like a bluish purple with some almost greenish flecks. In some lights it reflects some green undertone even which is very fascinating, I feel. So this one is Nimbus. This one is more of a saturated purple dyed on a white and it's called Crocus, like the crocus flower that we have currently popping up everywhere. <laughs> so this is Crocus. 
Next up we have Nebula, which is a very light, slightly variegated as well. Purple with grayish undertones and it's very desaturated, so it's very subtle. So this is Nebula. And last but not least we also have Dove, like we have on the linen. We dyed this one on Ovis as well, which is a grayish, very neutral kind of purple. So let me try and hold them up next to each other. So starting here we have Crocus, Nebula, Nimbus and Dove. And these are all the purples that would all go very greatly with the Lavender Haze set, I feel. So a lot of purpley shades to choose from. Um, but yeah, last but not least, we have two more shades. And those have been very, very requested. Like the shade family is always very requested. And they are always kind of one of a kind because of how I have to dye them. Um, but I try to recreate a matcha from another collection two months back because it was really loved. And it's a soft, kind of variegated also this time. Uh, and it's a soft, um, warmish green that reminds me of a matcha latte. Um, so this is matcha. And then we also have wasabi, which is more coolish in undertone, but also a very muted, beautiful green. It's a bit washed out on camera, but I hope it's visible. So matcha is a bit more yellowy in undertone and wasabi is a bit more bluish, blue grayish. Yeah, this depicts them well, I think. So yeah, those are all the shades we have on Ovis. I know it's a lot and I'm sorry, but I feel like I felt like dyeing all of those fun shades uh, for the spring and summer. Um, and also having the Moody collection on linen, I feel like these complement each other very well. And I'm super happy with how everything turned out. Lastly, let me talk you through a couple of admin things that have to do with this collection launch and some future projects. So for this admin section, let me start with uh, reminding you of the shop update date again, which is on the 19th of um, April on 8pm CET, which is one week earlier than we would usually do it uh, in a month because of my trip to the Edinburgh uh, Woolly Good gathering. Um, as mentioned, let me know if you're there. I would love to meet you. Um, and for this collection, also, like we, we did our best to make a lot of stock, but we realized that we are only able to do so much. And I'm really starting to feel like the pressure of delivering a lot every month and to be honest it has to do with my aim to making your shopping experience as relaxed as possible i from the last year on when we moved to the studio we doubled the amount of um, skeins we had per colorway in order to make the shopping experience for you a lot more relaxed and not that hectic but I've come to a point where I feel like this is not f doable for me on the long run um, because I'm just, you know, I'm feeling very, very drained currently because of all the production. And I feel like it's also limiting my creativity and other projects that I want to kind of do. Um, and so starting with this collection, things will be a little bit um, smaller amounts in stock. And so I definitely recommend to be there on time because I know it has been a bit more relaxed over the past couple of months, but yeah, that is one thing I recommend. And also um, we are going to change up a couple of things in our pricing in the next couple of months. Um, so we will have updated shipping prices and also yarn prices because of a lot of changes in, you know, supply, um, honestly, electricity bills and all that as a dyer is something you really have to consider. And I've been trying to take up as much of the cost changes as I could, um, but we are not able to do so anymore. If it should be like a future, if there should be a future of Wool and White Fiber Studio. 
It sounds really pathetic. It's not that bad, but I just want to be very transparent about this and I'm going to talk about more as soon as the price changes are actually facing. For now, we are keeping the prices the same um, probably up until June. Um, and this collection is definitely going to be um, one of the last ones where you can get the old prices. And not only that, um, because I found it only fair before we might increase our prices, um, not for all bases, but for some and probably for the most of them. Um, I want to give you the chance to um, stock up on a couple of bases um, before we do the price change and have a bit of a discount on them. So um, we are going to have a bit of a spring sale um, with this update and not all bases will be on sale. Like everything that I just showed, the new things are not going to be on sale. Linen will not be on sale and Ovis will not be either, but a few of the older bases and stock that we still have in the shop will be on sale. Um, and you will get a 20% off without any code. It's just gonna start with the collection launch. The sale will run until the 30th of April, um, like 11 p.m. my time. So it's, it's CET, so definitely check that out um, because it will automatically shut off. So I cannot really, you know, if you're ordering after it, it will not apply. The discount is just set to a certain time. So yeah, but you will get 20% off BFL Romney, our BFL Romney bases and our roots and, you know, everything that's currently in the shop except for Ovis because we're not going to discount all the colorways and then, you know, it's, it, it would be a bit of a mess. So, and Cloud will also be on sale. So we are going to have this huge sale and I want to tell a couple of things about it because you know that I'm not necessarily a big fan of sales and you know going with the seasonal sales that people expect of businesses and I don't follow those um, but with everything coming up and the changes that we are planning in stock keeping and everything I would like to get rid not get rid but rehome a few more of the skeins um, that we currently have in stock in order for us to have a bit of a you know fresh start and yeah reorganize everything properly without having a lot of back stock and that is the reason why we want to make the sale one to manage our back stock to to also make it possible for you to purchase um skeins at a discounted price before we up our prices in general so i guess that is everything about the sale if i'm not mistaken um yeah, I hope you're gonna enjoy this little treat. Um, it's a bit, yeah, it's a big thing for me to offer this much of a discount, but I hope that it's gonna be also a good reset for my head and that I can move on with all the new plans and all the cool things that we have in the making, actually. Um, but yeah, let's rehome some more skeins and let's stock up on some bases before we up the prices. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, a little reminder that linen will only be available in this collection. So that might be one base where you want to be quick, um, because we don't have a lot of stock of it. And yeah, I guess that is everything I wanted to talk about. Oh, one thing I wanted to update you on, um, because if you shop the March collection, I wanted to say a big, big thank you because we were having our... A little charity in this uh, in this uh, section and we uh, were able to donate 500 euros to the Last Mal Wir Sein um, organization that is working towards a more inclusive work environment for people with uh, disabilities and special needs so it's really lovely that we were able to raise um, this much money for them and can support their work so thank you for supporting the March collection now I hope you'll find something for the April collection that you'll really like. And I guess that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. I also hope to enjoy, uh, to update you on a couple of knitting related topics. Maybe in an episode before I leave to Edinburgh if I somehow manage. I don't know if I will, but yeah, if you're there, say hi. Um, or just write me an email and we can set up a meeting. And other than that, 
I guess that is it for today. I hope you're having a lovely weekend like we do with a lot of sun here that I hope to enjoy later today after editing. And yeah, wishing you a wonderful week and see you in the next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.